demand assign multiple access can be implemented only in time division multiple accessing or as a combination of or as a combination of frequency division multiple accessing and time division multiple accessing thank you and for this demand access multiple access technique to be implemented commonly we use uh, the vsat systems which we call as very small aperture terminals so this vsat which has been deployed on this satellite used to provide a special bandwidth if there is a break or if there is a non constant link between the edge station and the satellite so this we call it as a demand assigned multiple access system so you can see we have a satellite in space at the top we have the interactive vsat network so which consists of the hub equipment or the hub site where the users central computer is present then it is connected to the hub equipment so that of equipment is given to the antenna of very small aperture terminal system so that is transmitted to your satellite that link then from that link to the remote sat sites wherever we have an antenna at your receiver sites are given to pcs systems indoor units television receivers whatever might be so we have an antenna with an outdoor unit as we had seen in unit 3 and an indoor unit and a pc or a system or a laptop or a desktop or a tv receiver or any dtt services can be used at your receiver so this vsat network will provide an access if the edge stations link and the the link between the edge station and the satellite gets disturbed so this we call it as demand assigning so this diagram shows you shows you an dissipation of a demand assigned multiple access system so how it works there are two different types of channels that are being present in the dima one is common signaling channel and a communication channel the common signaling channel is abbreviated as is given as csc and the communication channel is given as cc so any user who wants to enter the communication channel using the dama first should call the controlling edge station using a common signaling channel so if anybody wants to enter or anybody wants to make a communication using the dama they should raise their hand to the edge station by giving a signal that they require a demand access if that raise is being given then the communication channel will be activated for that particular user then using the vsat network it will provide communication so where the link it will be deployed especially for that so then after the user uh, gives a hand signal or in gives a signal to the communication signaling channel the bend pipe transponders accept the data and retransmit it so this bend pipe transponders will be present in the satellite which will accept this users requisition and then it further retransmits then the receivers should listen in a synchronous mode continuously to retrieve the data so receiver should be properly ready to get its information from this satellite so where this uh, dama is used is that dama is often used in military environments due to the relative simplicity of implementation and ease of modeling so this can operate with the bend pipe transponders and thus requires no security or the satellite side yeah. 
there uh, then wherever we require a uh, master slave stations so there we can use it this without any satellite replacement so there this bama system is used this uh, demand access multiple uh, demand assign multiple access uh, systems can be used in any satellite communication link where traffic from an earth station is intermittent if there is heavy traffic also this bama can be utilized the demand access allows a satellite channel to be allocated to a user on request so on demand if required the user can make a request such that he might use the accession of this system rather than continuously giving access which greatly increases the number of simulations users can also be served by the system so boost scpc or the single carrier systems single carrier per channel systems using fdme users demand access to ensure that the available bandwidth in the transport is used as fully as possible depending upon the requirement of the user the fdme system using single carrier per channel uses this dama as already said the dama requires two types of channel one is common signaling another one is a communication channel so this is the diagram of the the transponder bandwidth is totally 54 megahertz the common signaling channels is the first one and the last one we are using a qpsk channel modulation of 64 kilobits per second and uh, the god band is always 15 kilohertz between the channels the channel each channel is having a spacing of 60 kilohertz separated by 15 kilohertz so totally 54 megahertz you will get it so frequency plan for a 54 megahertz transponder carrying 900 DAMA channels, demand access, where each channel has an occupied radio frequency bandwidth of 45 kilohertz, and uh, carries one 64 and each uh, carries a 64 kilo bits per second signal. the channel 1 and channel last which is channel 900 are used for common signaling channels in order to create the demand assignment system for setting up of the remaining 898 channels so there will be a control packet in the earth station that will receive and decode the informations the control packet will contains the source address and the destination address which also includes the cyclic redundancy check the control station measures duration of the connection in order to generate generate the billing data so any queries in the dama if you have any queries kindly type in chat box then we move on to the next topic
Okay, okay. Since I couldn't find any queries in the chat box, I further move on to the next topic. channel allocation schemes so this channel allocation scheme is a major plays a major part in the satellite access because every channel how it is being allocated with how many source address and destination address how many data bits can be sent how much bandwidth is required how much efficiency can this system give or how, how much data can be sent through this satellite access is all dependent upon the channel allocation scheme so for every wireless networks or a cellular networks the channel allocation is to be determined and considered So in a radio resource management for wireless and cellular networks, the channel allocation scheme are required to allocate bandwidth, uh, communication channels to base stations, access points, and the terminal equipment. The objective is to achieve maximum system spectral efficiency, which is measured uh, in bits per seconds per hertz, where we can use this for better efficiency or frequency reuse. But still, we assure a certain grade of service by avoiding co channel interference and adjacent channel among nearby cells or networks that share the same bandwidth. There are two types of strategies that are followed for uh, channel allocation. One is the fixed channel allocation, which is assigned by the network operator. Another one is dynamic channel allocation, which is dynamically used depending upon the requirement. So in fixed channel allocation scheme FCA, manually channels are assigned by each and every network operator, whereas in dynamic, we have the dynamic channel as well as dynamic frequency selection and spread spectrum. So these three are being used. Dynamic channel allocation, dynamic frequency selection, depending upon the need, we can select the corresponding frequency or the corresponding channel. How this fixed channel allocation is being done? Let us see that. In fixed channel, In a fixed channel allocation, each uh, cell is given a predetermined set of frequency channels. This fixed channel allocation requires manual frequency planning. That is arduous task in uh, TDMA and FDMA based systems. Since such a type of systems are uh, highly sensitive to co-channel interference. 
which occurs from the nearby cells that are using the same channel. So that the same in mobile communication, the frequency reuse concept of five or seven is being utilized. So in that cases, you would have got uh, three different uh, interferences: co-channel, adjacent channel, and uh, system interference. So this co-channel interference can be avoided in FCE. So if that is avoided, it may reduce in heavy traffic during some calls or during data transmission. Next is the uh, dynamic channel allocation and dynamic frequency selection. So the dynamic frequency selection can be applied in wireless networks with uh, several adjacent non-centrally controlled access points. So this is where DFS is being deployed. So a more efficient way of channel allocation could be a dynamic channel allocation or dynamic channel assignment in which the voice channel are not allocated to cell permanently. Instead, every call request base station is being addressed from a mobile switching center, MSC. So this is about the channel allocation schemes. So with this, we complete the first part of unit four. So any queries type in chat. Any queries type in chat box.
okay since there are no queries we move on to the further next topic which is digital video broadcasting in short we call it as dvb in uh, telecommunication we refer the term broadcasting as a method or as a technique that is used to transfer a message to all its receivers to all its receivers simultaneously all at a time whatever the information that is being available that it transfers efficiently so in broadcasting we refer it as it is so this uh, dvb digital video broadcasting is a set of standards that define a digital broadcasting using the existing satellites which are in existence satellite in existence cables and terrestrial infrastructures or cables ofcs so this digital video broadcasting is used as an example of your simplex where from studios all the video which comprises of audio as well as image in sequences are being processed and sent to receivers simultaneously sometimes uh, digital television is also an uh, abbreviation sometimes it is called as dvbs so television is a best example of dvbs so there are different standards available digital video broadcasting yes yes to dvbc c to dvbt dvbt so this is just an example of digital video broadcasting you can see a satellite satellite in space which sends informations or data it sends information or data to the antenna this is your antenna outdoor unit so this diagonal representation is shown in realistic you can see this type of antennas are your outdoor units where you have the feeder so these are your feeders in this feeders so this is your feeder in this antenna this is your feeder in this antenna then this large dish type is your reflector this is a reflector so depending upon the elevation angle on zenith angle these are being focused towards the feeder okay. then from there through cables connecting cables or through oc cables or through electromagnetic compatibility cables it is connected to your television system so this is your monitor that you are able to see a picture of a lady or at beach somewhere near by a beach this is an example of your dvb so what are the satellite frequency bands used for digital video broadcasting are that in c band 4 to 8 gigahertz in ku band 11 to 17 gigahertz in ka band which is 20 to 30 gigahertz frequency bands for dvb systems in satellite so here i will show you an example of a rosa system where free to air digital channel block diagram is given for a dvb you have an antenna from the antenna feeder it is been given to a receiver then appropriate a multiplexing unit then we give it to a modulation scheme 
potential amplitude modulation then to a combiner then to an optical transmitter so from the optical transmitter it is visualized onto the television sets so the high frequency obtained at the antenna is converted to intermediate frequency then from intermediate frequency to radio frequency or the low frequency where the message is being transmitted so that conversion takes place in the top system in a paid channel digital block diagram you can see we have the antenna feeder from the feeder we gives to the receiver then we have a disc scrambler so then we have multiplexer here we are having a disc scrambler which will which is used for encoding and decoding so appropriate codes are being used for discrambling the data that we are transmitted then it is given to the multiplexer then to the cam one since the rosa system has uh, deployed the quarter channel modulation for its modulation technique then to the combiner and to the optical transmitter then to the tv receiver set here is an another example of a single channel with single carrier receiver on an analog network you have the antenna from there feeder it is going to the receiver then it is going to the multiplexer where we use an interface uh, serial interface of asynchronous there more than one channels with the single receiver on a digital network single receiver on digital network is being deployed then what is the amplitude modulation then it is given to rf combiner as you had seen then an up conversion then it is given to an optical transmitter at the third window system 1.50 nanometer 1550 nanometer optical transmitter then it is sent to the appropriate locations coming to the standards the standards of distributed broadcasting yes stands for distributed broadcasting satellite this is the original digital video broadcasting forward error correction and demolition standard used for satellite television this dates from 1995 in its first release which was uh, developed uh, during 1993 to 1997 the frequency range being used by the nyatel for receiving channels is uh, 10.3 gigahertz to 12.3 gigahertz was the frequency bandwidth for the vvs system which was initially deployed only for interface with the satellites so another uh, important note is that uh, communication spectrum for military use was done up to 18 gigahertz frequencies with db dbbs standards dbb satellite second generation was designed as a popular success for dbbs systems which was developed during 2003 the impact 2 and impact 4 encoding schemes were used to minimize the bandwidth utilization with higher efficiencies and uh, the development of the dbbs2 coincided with the introduction of hd tv high definition television system and the h.264 which used moving pictures experts group for audio video compression system digital video broadcasting satellite second generation is tvb s2 So the differences between the DVB-S and DVB-S2 
was that DVBS is basically a standard definition and DVBS2 is a high definition. DVBS sends in MPEG2 that you find in uh, DVDs example. So whereas DVBS2 sends in MPEG4 which is a better compression algorithm than compared to your MPEG2. Uh, DVBS uses QPSK as a modulation code while DVBS2 uses QPSK, 8PSK, 16PSK modulation models. This is the major differences between DVBS and DVBS2. Next comes the next standard uh, digital video broadcasting cables, which is C, DVB C. So, this uh, DVB European Consortium standard for the broadcast of transmission of digital television over cable was being done in 1994. So this uses either the VHF ultra high frequency, UHF ultra high frequency and the VHF very high frequency. So that uses quadrature amplitude modulation, QAM. So 16 QAM, 32 QAM, which are the constellations, 64 QAM, 128 QAM, 26 QAMs. So this DVB-C can be used on MPEG-2 or MPEG-4 digital audio or video stream. Then the development in the cables was set up and the development was uh, done in 2008 where the DVB-C uh, cable to specification was approved by the Digital Video Broadcasting Steering Board in the year April 2009. So, which allowed bit rates up to 83.1 megabits per second on a 8 megahertz channel bandwidth using 4096 QAM modulation. See the number of constellations. So, the future extensions will uh, allow about uh, 97 megabits per second uh, to 110. 0.8 megabits per second for every channel using 16384 quam and 65536 equal adaptive quadrature amplitude modulation scheme. So this will be utilized only in ultra high frequency bands. So any queries till this, you can type in chat box. DVB, yes, DVB S2, DVB C, DVB C2. Digital video broadcasting.
since there are no queries we proceed on to the next topic digital video broadcasting over terrestrial so this has uh, three different modulation schemes qpsk 16 quam and 64 quam integration of phase shift keying and amplitude modulation in the same so a terrestrial over the air carries about 19.39 uh, megabits of data per second which uh, is used in a terrestrial then after the dvbt systems they are introduced uh, dvbh systems so a substandard of uh, dvbt introduced for handheld devices like mobile dvbh was introduced which was not much successful so later transmissions were made through dvb which was not only video but data as well so data and as well as videos was done in dvb next so this dvb consists of nit network information table the transport stream id and the service description table sdt psid nit next topic in uh, digital video broadcasting is IRD so what is this IRD IRD is your integrated receiver decoder which is the interface between the satellite dish at your receiver and a broadcasting facility for video audio infrastructure so input would be RF output would be your ASA or AV so this would be capable to descramble paid channels Thank you. The advantages is that high bandwidth output or broadcasting. This is designed for built for video broadcasting. Low cost of remote terminals are the advantages of using this IRD in video broadcasting. The disadvantage is that the hub cost is very high. It cannot handle TCP or IP traffic conditions within the MPEG system. This is very inefficient when we use the transponder capacity to the full and it is a power limited satellite requirement. advantages and disadvantages of integrated receiver decoder next are some of the examples of the rosa system and its diagrammatic representation how the multiplexing structures are used in multiplexer 9600 series Selective availability, operating multi multiplexer in the frequency of 96, sorry, 9600 megahertz frequency. There are eight ASA inputs, asynchronous serial inputs, two asynchronous serial outputs with a web management system or a server ROSA system. So here in this diagram you can see there are four mixers. Or multiplexers being used. This is your quant structure. Quadrature amplitude modulation. Of multiplexer nine six double zero, which is given to quant modulator at digital frequencies. Use a 64 quam 
The others that can be used are also 32, 120, 256 in this. The ASA inputs are present, you can see. These are your ASA inputs, these are your RF output. I'm heading. So this ASA input, this is RF output. So this could give a limitation of only 38.2 megabits per second for every quadrature amplitude modulation. This is the structure of a D scrambler, you can see. This is used to open complete stream of scrambled channels. An ASA input, ASA output for 96,000 megahertz of multiplexing. Working with sharing cards. Then then we have the EMR, Enhanced Multimedia Router, given by the company Suma Vision. So this major purpose is to add AV channels, audio video channels in a digital. Video broadcasting. There are six cards. You can see six lights being glowing. Each row. Some is being cut out. Six cards per chases. There are five. Unlock MP. E.G. MPEG 2s. Framelock MPEG system. One output card. Two ASI inputs, two ASI output. Ten totally, you'll get ten AVs and two ASIs. To a net manager, there could be usage of other cards like when like unicasting or multicasting system.
Next is the FX thousand. So which uses QEM modulation for multiplexer DM six four double zero that converts the IP to radio frequency, which has three cards. You can see there are three cards. One, two, three. Each card will have two ports, two ports, and every port will support two digital frequencies. This means for every card we have four frequencies. So totally, since you have three cards, so it will be twelve frequencies for a pass. So this is a block diagram of the Rosa system where audio video. With free pay digital channeling is being used with an EMR. Let's see here EMR. For a Motorola system, both are same. If you see, it is not same. If you think that both the diagrams could be same, no. You have an apex element in the Motorola system. So same antenna feeder. It is given to a receiver or decoder. Then we have EMR, then DM six four double zero Ethernet switch, FX combiner, then to the optical transmitter. So different companies use different systems within them. Next is the sharing devices. So sharing devices are the examples like this. You can see this is a shared device. This is a shared device. So this is used to share one disk scrambler in multiple receivers and disk scramblers. The card is inserted in the main device, and sharing cards are connected with this main device. So such that other receivers or disk scramblers can work with this sharing cards. Next is the prism chases. The Vivo LT Video Optical Line Terminal, given by Scientific Atlanta Company, which is used in digital radio broadcasting in fiber network distribution. So the chases in the data center converts the radio frequency network to fiber. Main optical network. So the chases in POPs are used for distribution and amplification. Each chases will have 15 slots, and the four first four slots will be reserved for power. The last 15 slot is managed is used for management card. So rest of the slots are for amplification. So totally, we have 16. Any queries?